So I'm out here at uh, Ashbridge's Bay, just enjoying this amazing summer's day. And I thought, you know what, let's try doing a video out here and talk about why I decided to go back to eating meat. Um, I've mentioned it in other videos to some degree, but more of the personal stuff that was going on at that time. And, um, you know, first of all, I want to make very clear here that uh, I'm not encouraging anybody who is a vegan to go back to eating meat. I'm not en encouraging anybody not to become vegan or to try uh, eating 100% plant-based. In fact, I encourage it. Do it. Um, if you do it right, it's, it's amazing. And um, I got to say that, you know, probably for me becoming vegan back in late 2006 saved my life on many levels uh, in terms of personal health. Uh, you know, I was in my late 40s, um, starting to experience the typical stuff that someone that age would experience eating the way I did and um, living the somewhat self-indulgent life that I was living. Here, let me take my glasses off. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, again, I've talked about this in other videos. Um, I was... Without my knowledge, until I got a physical, I found out that I was glucose intolerant. I was on my way to being full-blown type 2 diabetic. Um, my, I had slightly elevated cholesterol levels and um, the beginnings of arthritis. And, uh, you know, I was just, it was the starting point of health decline. Um, where I would be today had I not become vegan, I don't think it would be a pretty sight, that's for sure. And I was definitely um, overweight uh, by about 40 pounds or so, which all of that, um, once I adopted the Dr. Est Estelstein's diet, within three months I was pretty much able to reverse all of that. And it was fast. I did it under the supervision of a dietitian that was a part of the conventional medical um, community that I was involved with at that time. After that, it, it, I mean, the journey as a vegan has been really positive. There's, there is a couple of, uh, uh, you know, I could say times that were not good uh, and that were of con real concern. For example, when I discovered 80-10-10, the fruitarian diet, I decided to experiment with that and um, eliminating you know, I went to the ultimate extreme where I eliminated all overt fats from my diet, ate nothing but fruits and a little bit of vegetables, and within a very short period of time, experienced my libido sort of falling off a cliff. And um, my sex drive had declined. That was serious stuff. Uh, at the time, though, it was kind of a relief. I felt like, wow, I can not be... Um, you, you know, I, I was a very sexual person before that and I felt like it controlled a big part of my life and that was gone. So I enjoyed that for a while, but I had to realize, I, you know, I did realize very quickly that this is not right. There's something wrong here and it's definitely related to the diet because it happened. It wasn't a gradual thing. It was sudden. Um, and then also with the fruitarian diet that I did for about six months, I there was a shift in my way of thinking too. Um, I remember when I was at a party, I um, that were it was a non-vegan party, but you know there was it was a pool party. There was a fruit platter and uh, a vegetable platter, so there was no problem for me to eat stuff. Uh, and so here I'm surrounded by all these people that are not vegan, and are definitely not you know even close to being fruitarian. And I felt completely alienated. I felt like I was not a part of them, that somehow I was of this different, I was like a different being altogether, um, in a different level of enlightenment. And it was not like these people were, you know, snubbing me, um, not being friendly. They, they were quite friendly and uh, had no problem with my lifestyle choices, of my dietary choices or anything like that. That was not the issue. The issue was with me and where my mindset was going. It was, to me, um, I, I was able to catch that rather quickly and realize that 
I was entering into a different state of mind that would have led, I believe, to an eating disorder where you're attempting to eat only those things that you feel make you pure. And uh, so, you know, um, I was able to catch that and deal with it. And then, of course, I gave up the fruitarian diet for various reasons um, and reintroduced fat which helped bring back my libido to some degree, but it's never been quite the same. Uh, so that, so that, you know, those were kind of the negatives of the vegan diet, but other than that, it, it's been amazing. The health benefits have just been phenomenal. Like, um, you know, being a man in his 50s and feeling like I'm in my 20s. But something happened back in March that made me rethink everything. And, um, Basically, it began with a real estate deal. I bought a house in uh, Oshawa for like $200,000. You know, the deal was still ongoing. It hadn't closed yet. It was a cash deal, no mortgage involved. And um, I, I started um, getting really stressed out, which was kind of strange for me. That, Like, you know, I've dealt with some really stressful situations in the past, but this was becoming overwhelming. And then before I knew it, I was experiencing full blown anxiety attacks. Now, it turned out this house was really in bad shape. I got my, I bought myself a dud, or I was on my way to buying myself a dud. I was already locked into this contract. Um, so it, it suddenly, it, it became so overwhelming that I basically had a breakdown. Um, I went into full mode panic attacks and, um, I couldn't control my mental state. Now, at the time, I just, I didn't make the connection that it could possibly have something to do with diet. Um, I just felt like I, I took on something that I couldn't handle and uh, the anxiety was a result of that. So, you know, get out of it and I'll feel better. And sure enough, I got out of the, the, um, the deal with the house, I managed to break the contract at a cost. I lost about $5,000 on that. Um, not the end of the world though. And uh, I felt better afterwards. And then I sort of left it at that, you know, feeling humiliated by the whole experience. But it just, afterwards I had to really think about what happened there. Um, why did I, was not able to handle that, that, that experience, that real estate deal that went bad. Why was I not able to handle it emotionally or mentally that I was completely falling apart? This was atypical of who I am as a person. Like, I'm constantly taking on highly stressful situations. And um, I know what it's like to experience anxiety. I know what it's like to um, be afraid, uh, be emotionally upset, all of that, but not to the degree that I was experiencing at that time. Um, this was completely, I was at the point where I, I thought I was going to get, I, I was going to be hospitalized. It was that bad. Um, so again, I'm not making the connection here between the possibility that there could be a nutrient deficiency going on that's affecting my um, mental state. I just carried on. Um, I decided to take, shortly after that, I decided to take a vacation up north for a few days. I stayed at a, uh, a lodge at Savile Beach. At that time, it was uh, rainbow trout season uh, by the river where I was staying, Savile River. And um, so, one day I was out just going out for a hike and I came across a couple of guys fishing. They caught this um, nice sized rainbow trout and the guy's holding it in his hand and I'm looking at this thing and I just suddenly had a strong craving for that fish. I wanted to eat it. Um, and I felt, I, I thought that was rather curious, like why? you know, that I experienced that. But yeah, I really had a strong craving to eat that fish. So, um, you know, I let it go at that and carried on with my vacation, you know, still eating vegan. And, um, but when I came, when I, I, I thought about it more, I, I when I got back home, I, I really started to consider about, you know, whether I was adequately 
um, converting vegetable omega threes into um, the the EPA and DHA, which is what our body uses. And I started looking it up and and discovered that it's actually quite difficult for um, our bodies to do that. That and for some people, we just don't convert uh, like things like flax seeds and chai chai seeds and uh, hemp and where, whatever has is rich in omega-3 that's plant-based the body still has to do the conversion from you know the ALA into the EPA and DHA and it's a it's our bodies for some people it's it's difficult or next to impossible and so as a result of it you can experience a deficiency in omega-3 fatty acid which I started to suspect that that's what the case was. Um, and then on top of that, I started reading about other vegans, long-term, or should I, should I say ex-vegans, people that were vegans and um, ended up having to break with it because of health reasons, that they were experiencing deficiencies. And in some cases, these people had been vegans for like 20 years. They, they as far as, I could see what they were eating was typical of anybody that was a health conscious vegan. So they weren't eating vegan junk food and being irresponsible about their diet. Um, and for many of them, it was a very difficult thing to go back to eating meat, but it was absolutely necessary for their, to, to recover their health. And in some cases, um, the damage is permanent. They're, you know, they're better by returning back to meat, but um, certain things will never, it's, it's per, the damage has been done permanently. Um, and so that started to get me thinking, well, you know, I've been vegan for nine years. I'll be going on 10 years. Could this happen to me? Is this beginning to happen to me? And, um, so that's when I decided to go out and buy some rainbow trout. I did, I cooked it, I ate it. And I got to tell you something, the first bite was, there was like, it was like my body was saying, thank you. I just relished it. It wasn't even, even about the flavor. It was just, there was something that my, it was like my body really needed this. Now this is not science, okay? I'm not saying this is science. It's my own personal subjective experience. Um, and I'm, so I'm not trying to peddle this onto anybody else. But I'm just saying that if you have been a vegan long term, you could be at risk of nutritional deficiencies if your body is not being able to get uh, important nutrients through a plant through eating plant based. So, yeah. Instead, though, of doing what a lot of long term vegans do is they usually, you know. A lot of the stories that I read about long-term vegans going back to eating meat, they go in the other extreme where they, they take on the paleo diet and suddenly they're all, you know, pro, you know, meat, meat, this, everything's got to be meat. And th this is where I really started thinking, okay, it's time for change. This has been a great journey being 100% plant-based for nine years, but I think now I need to change it up and safeguard myself against the possibility of doing permanent damage. And um, with, so I decided that, okay, I, I'm going to follow um, more of a blue zone example, and that is people, you know, this, if you've read the blue zone, um, about the blue zone areas in the world where people live to be 100, they're healthy, they're vibrant, and all that stuff, right? And they're t what's common among, amongst them is that they're predominantly plant-based, and they, but they have some meat or some animal products in their diet. Uh, and it works out to an average of 95% plant-based and 5% animal. So I thought that's the model I'm going to follow. follow. And, um, you know, I already had the plant-based down pretty good pretty good in terms of eating healthy and so it's just a matter of reintroducing some meat and that's when when I decided to do what I call the six to one where once one day out of the week I eat animal products and it's really just one meal out of the week that I'm eating animal products and I find that that makes all the difference in the world I am now in another real estate deal that is twice as much as what the one that I 
that almost caused a complete mental breakdown. It's twice as stressful because I don't even have the place yet. It's not even built yet. It's under construction. Um, and yet I am not experiencing the anxiety, not even even close to what I experienced over that uh, deal back in the winter time. Um, is this a result of reintroducing omega rich uh, meat into my diet? I don't know. I, I, I'm not a nutritionist. I, I'm just, this is a personal experience. I don't, I, I don't know. I, I'm just, I feel like since I've brought meat back into my diet, the kind of meat I'm eating is primo stuff. It's not factory farm. It's pretty much wild game, um, like wild suckeye and venison. Those are my two favorites. And rainbow trout that's caught here in northern Ontario in the fresh water, waters of northern Ontario. Um, this is, adding this to my diet, I, I just, I feel like in terms of mental and emotional stability, I'm a lot stronger. And so for now, I'm going with this. But, you know, this is not a diet that I'm trying to promote on. You know, I, I, don't, I'm not, I don't want everybody to convert to the six to one diet. That's the, the best thing in the world. You know, it's not like that for me. I, I, I think, uh, you know, you got to really work this stuff out for yourself. Everybody's coming from a different place. There is no best diet that works for everybody across the board. We all, I mean, we live in different places, different climates. Uh, we have different circumstances. Um, and our bodies are different. We have different health challenges. And so I just encourage that... Um, you know, you, you think this through intelligently for yourself. You get the information that you can get and work on eating in a manner that is healthy and beneficial. And it's a funny thing. When you do that, it also tends to be beneficial for the planet as well.